What Urs does is disassembling sculpture in some manner, messing sculpture up. It seemed odd and, and perhaps somewhat disappointing for us as well to simply do the retrospective and not have something that would offer this insight into a much more open-ended, I hesitate to use the word spectacle, but of course it is spectacular. In fact, I quite embrace the spectacular <laughs> uh, moment at Geffen. So these, the sort of yin and the yang, the opposition between these two spaces was very important. There's always a touch of humor to his philosophy. I think, uh, you know, it's never allowed to sit as a, a deep statement without a, also an element of the, the sly, the deadpan, which I suppose, in fact, is characteristic of some of the best philosophical statements. It's a series that Urs has titled The Problem Paintings. And what he's done, in effect, is used headshots from, from movie stars, some very recognizable, Lauren Bacall, Jimmy Stewart. Um, in other cases, it's not someone we immediately gather who it is. And of course, their face is obscured by, in this case, fruit and vegetables, or just fruit. The impact, I think, from the work is, is partly to do with the treatment of the image. So the, the background image, the image of the movie star, is fading away, it's this rather sepia, almost like a hand-coloured photograph, whereas the image on top of it that's kind of intruding almost graphically, it's like violently actually, is shot in such a way that it has almost a three-dimensional quality to it. So it's a, a very sort of strange juxtaposition of photographic style as well as an image that, that is sort of almost alarmingly confrontational. The wax pieces, I mean, in a way you could think of them certainly within a tradition of works that have dematerialized over a period of time. Um, but here on a much different scale, and I think also, you know, quite deliberately as frequently uses the figure. So there's something graphically unsettling about seeing a human form. In one case, it's his friend, the artist Rudy Stingel. In other cases, it's a sculptural form, the rape of the Sabine women. But again, it's a, a human figure that is deteriorating over time. I find them fascinating as you know, an example of monolithic sculpture because the, certainly the Giambologna piece is, is a massive work. And yet, of course, it will end up being nothing. You know, it's a, an incredible gesture in terms of sculptural practice as well. The effect is to create the collage within the exhibition through the sort of strange position that you take looking through the holes at other works and the, the confusion really of space. You know, I think there's also, to my mind, it's, it's bringing something of the atmosphere of the studio into the museum environment. We're no longer in the space of the pristine gallery, white-walled, uh, you know, perfect space. We're, we're in a disassembled, you know, mutated environment and uh, it's, it's more of a, a space of creation, let's say, rather than the often quite dead atmosphere of the museum. Urs's work deals a lot with images that uh, either we feel that we might have dreamt of or you know, have been extracted from fairy tales or exist somewhere perhaps that you know, he might have managed to latch onto them. The, the Bread House is a great example. It's uh, something that feels very much Grimm's fairy tale based. But at the same time, it's sort of sitting on top of a, a series of uh, oriental carpets, a sort of very strange juxtaposition of this organic material that's deteriorating with the rather domestic feel of the carpet, so sort of the home of the bread house. It's, it's you know, quite typical of Urs, I think, to also make it slightly disgusting. You know, the bread is crumbling and ground into the carpet space. One of the things that Urs is very keen to establish or, or to try and, which is probably true of many artists who are really trying to push their work ahead to a new level is, is to come up with something that also doesn't look like art or as we know it and you know that is always the most exciting thing with artists when you encounter somebody who's really trying to produce something that we haven't seen we don't quite know what to do with it and uh, you know I think certainly the clay piece at Geffen is about broaching a new territory. I think that it's very much again to do with this collision of, of imagery in, in our culture um, these are objects that are very banal I mean a stick of asparagus a honey bear pot. I mean, there's nothing particularly remarkable about them, but they are very much our everyday existence. But then they're produced in a way that pushes them into a very different realm, you know, very slick, you know, very sophisticated realm. Although they, they seem very pop indeed, it's not the slick pop that we think of as the, you know, the classic pop image, the perfect body, the, the perfect car. There's a dog's toy that's had its head chewed off. You know, it's not, it's not something that we expect to see treated in this very refined manner. He's not an artist who wants to produce for a few. He wants to produce for many. Um, and in the case of Geffen, of course, you know, there's a notice on the museum website inviting people to come and sign up and come along. It was open to everyone. The many have participated in the making of the work that will be for even more people, which is, you know, I, I guess the, the greatest achievement that you could have in that respect. The degree to which he's been enabled through technology to develop sculptures that are 
um, you know, now um, of a irreality, let's say, uh, that I don't think I could have imagined him producing even five years ago, the collapsed bed, the, 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 the bed with the dump of cement on it. I mean, they're, they're sort of extraordinary pieces in terms of how they're produced, but, and it's that production that allows them to have this remarkable impact really on us. It's kind of a miracle to me actually that in this day and age of uh, you know, an absolute oppression of imagery in our culture, that an artist can still produce something that is enlightening, disturbing, and completely new and unexpected.